Huh. This thing won't fire. I tried everything. You didn't even really do all that much yet. I tried all that I know, Johnny. Yeah, which was like one thing. You know, in high school, I took a small engine class. I was top of the class. Oh yeah, when was that? 1874? Huh. Real funny. 1957. Yeah, well, I'm gonna call Terrell because you don't know what you're doing. Put that down. I know what I'm doing. I just haven't seen one of these before. Hi, Terrell. Oh, hey, little Johnny. What can I help you with today? Grandpa's working on the engine for my main bike. And of course, he can't get it started. Sounds about right. Did he try starting fluid? Grandpa! Did you try starting fluid? Yeah, I tried starting fluid, Johnny. I think. Hang it up, all right? Those minutes are costing us. Hold on, little Johnny. A customer just came in. I got to wait on him. So hold on a second. Can I help you, sir? OK, Grandpa. I'll ask him. What do you want my grandpa to do now? The first thing I would do is drain all the oil out of it. Okay, he said drain all the oil out of it, Grandpa. What? That doesn't make any sense. Well, I guess if that's what he says to do. Now what, Terrible? If I was you, I would smash you with a hammer. He said smash it with a hammer! What? What should I smash with a hammer, Johnny? I'd give it a good one, right on the spark plug. All right. If that's what he says to do. All right. Now what, Johnny? Try that. That ought to get it to fire. Oh! He said to start it on fire! What? But why would I do that, Johnny? That doesn't make any sense. Well, if that's what he says to do. Terry Mackerel here. Today's video is going to be on this. The most dangerous snowblower ever made. This Craftsman self-propelled 26-inch Seven horsepower snowblower. And I'll tell you why it's the most dangerous snowblower ever made. Now this here snowblower is probably from the late 70s, probably 1978. It's still got points condenser in it, so that tells me it's pre-80s. And it was manufactured by Murray. So this is a Murray snowblower manufactured for craftsmen, put their name on it, because Craftsmen don't make anything, they're just a store. So I'm going to tell you why this thing is dangerous. Most snow blowers have a lever that you engage up here, like one of these, but up here. And if something was to happen where you let go of the handlebars, it'll stop. This thing works the opposite. You have to squeeze this lever, put it in gear, and then let this lever out like a clutch, then it takes off. Then when you want to put it in neutral, you got to squeeze the lever again. So if something happens, you trip on some ice or something and fall, this thing's just going to keep going. And if you notice, there's no other lever on here to operate the auger. So what you're asking, so, so Carol, what operates the auger? How does the auger work? And I'll show you when I take this cover off. So what do you think's under this cover, huh? Huh, grass rats? What do you think's under there? Belt? There's no belts under here. There's a centrifugal clutch, like a mini bike. This has got a mini bike clutch on it. So, when you rev the engine up, just like on a mini bike, it kicks this thing in, kicks in the clutch, and it starts spinning the auger. So when you're blowing snow, you're gonna be at full full throttle. You're gonna be wide open, 
blowing snow. So again, when you let go of this handle, if you trip and fall over like frozen newspaper or frozen rug or, or you trip over the dog or something, and you let go of the handles and you're laying out the driveway with a broken kneecap, this thing is just gonna travel, keep driving, ghost riding with that auger spinning. And it ain't gonna stop until it hits something. The neighbor's car, your house, whatever it grabs, it starts chewing up. So that's why this thing is so dangerous. Again, no thought about safety when it went into engineering this. Now I'm sure this is a good snowblower. Probably did a good job blowing snow. It's got this drift breaker thing on here. The problem is there's no parts available for it. So somebody brings this into your shop and wants to get it fixed, you gotta let them know, yeah, we'll fix it, you know, as long as it's gotta get running. We'll do as much as we can, but if you break something on it that you need to get the replacement part for, you're not gonna be able to get it because they don't make it anymore. Now it's also got a factory light kit on it, which is pretty nice. It's got a headlight on there. So this engine, being a seven horse with a centrifugal clutch on it, this would be good for a mini bike. Because it's also got, you know, a lighting coil on it, which powers the headlight. So you can put this on mini bike and run the headlight and the tail light. That's what this thing would be good for. But as far as a snowblower, it's kind of dangerous. I wouldn't want to resell it to any of my customers for the fact that it's dangerous. And if something breaks on it and they bring it back, I'm not going to be able to fix it unless I can find a, a new old stock part. So let's see if we can get this thing running. So the first thing I'm going to do is pull off this blower shroud. Blower shroud. Heater box. Most of the screws are missing out of it right now anyway. So we can get at the carburetor. We just got a single wire here going to this kill switch. Feels like it's got compression. Let's check the oil. I need some pliers. See if it's got dinosaur syrup in it. Right. It looks pretty nasty, like it's never been changed since 1978. Yeah, it's got oil in it. It's nasty oil. It is really black. I don't think it's ever been changed. Now another thing I noticed, it's got electric start on it. It's got a 12 volt electric start. Now I don't know if it came with that because there's no spot for a battery. So being a Tecumish engine, you know, they're 12 volt starters and they're 110 volt snowblower starters will interchange. But that's nice, it's got electric start. So if I put this on a mini bike, I'd be able to start that mini bike electrically. So I'm gonna hook a, a battery to it so we can get it to crank over so I don't have to pull on it. And we'll see if it's got spark. If it's got spark, we'll shoot some, some dinosaur juice in the carburetor, see if it runs and dies. If it's got no spark, we'll have to see why it doesn't have spark. And chances are the points are probably corroded. So that's what we're gonna do. All right, let's check and see if it's got spark. This might not be a good ground. It's sparking a little. Huh. 
try it on the head here. Sparks every once in a while. So I have to pull this cover off, see what's going on with them points. Blow that off a little bit. We got one to come out. Hope those head bolts don't snap off. I'll just cut that fuel line off. Because it's hard as a carp. And then we get a wrench. to uh, see if I can crack those two bolts loose. I don't think that impact is strong enough. Yeah, it'll come out now. They just need a little help. these up too. This should come off now. Hopefully. it off. Throw down the garbage. Now we're here at the flywheel. It looks like that Bendix is stuck. And they need a little a little lubricant. Let me get my croil. There we go. All right, I'm gonna flip it up on its face. Now I can get that flywheel off. I can get right at them points. Let me get a socket to put that off. I think I have a knockoff tool that size. I used to have a Tecumish uh, knockoff tool that would thread on here. But as you guys know, when you loan tools to people and they never come back and then you can't remember who you loaned it to, I never replaced it. But this break, breaks and scrap them knockoff tool fits on there. So I'll use that one. So let me find a good spot to pry. Give it a good sharp blow. And there's your dinner.
Yeah, mini bike guys, they'd love to have this engine. Here's the flywheel with all the magnets in it. So if we get spark out of it, we'll see if that headlight works. Let me, uh, get this cover clip off of there. This looks like it's never, never been, uh, taken off before. Get that key out of there. Just a woodruff key. That's what they use for a flywheel key. Alright. They don't look that bad. Probably just corroded. I just hit them with some sandpaper. And we'll see if it'll if it'll spark. Got some 400 grit. Because it was sparking a little bit. A lot of times they just get corroded. And they just need to be cleaned. If you gotta figure a snowblower doesn't get used as much as your other lawn equipment. Unless you live in Buffalo, New York, they probably use them every week. All right, I'll spray some brake clean on there, blow it out real good, stick the flywheel back on, crank it over with the electric start. and uh, see if we brought that spark back to life. All right, this old spark tester is bad. Now, believe it or not, they do get bad. So I got this one hooked up. So let's see if we got spark. Oh yeah. We got spark now. Plug don't look that bad. Let's see if we can get it to lick off. I had to put the head bolts back in. Since I'm trying to start it without the cover, now we're running it real dangerous. Now it's even more of a more dangerous snowblower. So this thing's garbage. I don't want to rely on this. Some carb spray. Get in the front, Mr. Cameraman, because we're going to see if that headlight works, too. Doesn't say which way's on or off. Let's give it a good shot. And see what happens. Yeah, the headlight was working. Okay, so it ran and died. Turn all that off. So, we just got to go through the carburetor. Let me flip it back up on its face. And we'll pull this float bowl off. It's coming out kind of tight, which means it's gummed up. It looks in decent shape, the snowblower. It's not all beat up. Well, this thing may have had spark. That other spark tester was, because the points didn't look that bad. That's not too bad in there. I'll clean up this needle valve. 
I'll put a new float bowl in it. I'll put a new float and needle and seat in it. Because these brass floats have a tendency to get a leak in them. And then they'll fill up with fuel and they'll get heavy and then it'll be weighted down. Usually shake it. Whenever we have this old stuff come in, if it's got a brass float, we just replace it with the plastic one. We don't mess around. All right. I'm going to take a look in that inside of the fuel tank. See how dirty that is. Hopefully it's clean. Oh wow, we got lucky here. Where's my flashlight? All right, look at that fuel tank, clean as a whistle. We got lucky there. All right, I'm gonna get this old fuel line off. And it's got these kind of clamps on there. And I've got the pliers to remove these clamps. See how it's got that little cut out in there and on the side. So if you wanna grab it from the side, you can grab it or from the front. I don't like these clamps. And then we're gonna use Mr. Heat Gun. Hello, Mr. Heat Gun. Hello, Carol, how are you? I'm good, Mr. Heat Gun. What do you need me to blow my stinky breath on today? This fuel line. Oh, fuel line, I like fuel line. Yeah, we're gonna heat up, warm up this fuel line with your stinky breath so it'll be easier for me to pull it off. Will do, Terrell. Let me fire it up, fire it up, fire it up. Oh, no, shut up. Don't you start with that fire it up stuff. Oh, okay. Oh, that worked good. Oh, all right, let me do the next one. Okay, blow your stinky breath on there. All right. Is that it? That's it, Mr. Heat Gun. Okay, put me back in the drawer. All right, I will. So this is the low speed adjusting screw. And it's the real long one. So on this particular carburetor, for this low speed circuit, there's a little tube that goes up and down inside this carburetor. And if that tube is stuck, you won't have any low speed circuit. You may be able to get the engine to run on high speed, but as soon as you try to idle it down, it'll just die out. So I'm going to take this carburetor off and we're going to shake it and see if that tube is moving. And if not, then I'm going to have to get it unstuck. So all I got to do is take these two 7 16 nuts off right here and I should get this, be able to get this carburetor off. These nuts got screws on the back and they're spinning. So I'm gonna have to take it off from the manifold. So there's two Phillips head screws in here. There's one back here, and there's one under here. This one's a little tough. There we go. So you have to unscrew them a little bit to get this off. You gotta keep going back and forth. Unscrew it a little bit here and a little bit there. Because they don't come out. They're like captured in there. There we go. Now I got it off. So now all I have to do is undo the link. which is a little rusty. And there's our carburetor. 
came off in one piece. All right, let's take it over to the bench and check it out. So in here, in this chamber here, is a little tube. If you were to somehow be able to drill this out and get it apart, there's a little tube in there and that little tube is supposed to slide up and down. So what you do is you kind of hold it, keep anything from rattling, and you should be able to hear that tube sliding back and forth in there and I don't hear it. So that means it's stuck. And another thing is, see how well, this is plugged right here? It's got that little, little plug. That's so when they manufactured it, they could drill through this way, and they drill through this way, and then they plug them off. So on the other side of this, way down in there is a hole. Find something I can... So down in here on the side is a hole in here. And you also gotta make sure that hole is clear. Cause if that hole isn't clear, then your low speed isn't gonna work either. So you usually gotta get, you know, these tip cleaners and you may have to modify one, bend it a little bit so you could check that hole and make sure that hole is clear. It's real hard to see that hole on camera, but it's in there and you gotta find it and make sure it's clear. But first we gotta get that tube to move. So let me spray it real good. Let me, uh, there's an O-ring and a, a brass washer in here. Let me get them out. And another important thing is this vent hole here. It's gotta be clear. This one's got a pretty good size one. There's some of these other carburetors where that hole is real small. And if it gets plugged up, it'll leak gas like it's got a bad needle and seat. A lot of times it gets, it gets crumb, crummied up like this and you just gotta spray it off with some carb cleaner and then poke through that hole. But if you got an old Tecumish snow blower and you replace the needle and seat and the float and everything and it's still leaking gas out of here, this little hole is plugged. This little atmospheric vent, it's called. So uh, let me see if I can get that tube unstuck and then we'll make sure that 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 hole is clear and everything and put a carb kit in it and we'll put it back together and that thing should start. Spray it down some with some carb spray. That usually doesn't work. I usually got to heat it up with a propane torch in this area. But you got to be careful not to overheat it because you will melt this aluminium. So. I heat it up with a, with a propane torch and I'll spray lubricant in there, like this croil. But I did spray some carb spray in there. So you wanna kinda hold all the linkages and stuff so nothing else is rattling around. And then shake it back and forth. And I got lucky, I got real lucky. I can hear it moving, hear it? That's that little pin. And if you've got a good light, you should be able to see it down at the end of the hole. Now, I don't know if our camera can pick that up, but down at the end of the hole, I could see that tube. It's blocking it off. And then when you flip it over, the tube's gonna fall down out of the way, and then you'll see it's not in there. I could see it moved, it's gone. So this is, this is also important. 
Never put this screw in. It's only on this Tecumish carburetor with this long screw. There are some bigger horsepower engines that have a carburetor that looks like this. The screw is real short and it's got a little pinpoint tip on it. It's not long like this one. That one doesn't have that tube. Only this one with the long, uh, low speed adjusting screw. So you never want to have the carburetor like this and then put the screw back in. Because that screw's going to run into that tube, it's going to smash that tube, and you just ruin this carburetor. You always want to put it in. You always want to put this adjusting screw back in like this, with it like this. And make sure that tube drops down. Then turn it all the way in until it stops. Don't force it. And then you're supposed to back it out seven eighths of a turn. I always go one. Now I can put a needle and seat in here and a new bowl gasket and we'll put this thing back on. Call oh, that hole down there that I was telling you about. We want to make sure that's clear. It should be. Since the rest of it cleaned up. I'm having a hard time seeing it. I don't know if there's one in this one. I'm going to take the screw back out. I'm going to spray some carb spray down in there. See if I could see it come out through the center there. Oh yeah, it's clear. It's probably hard to see. Look in the center there, you'll see some carb spray. See it? See it coming through? That means it's clear. I had a mini bike recently that I was working on, one of my own, and it wouldn't idle for crap. It was running real bad. I had to keep starting it and I had to keep kind of goose in the throttle to keep it running and it was that hole that cross drilled hole it was plugged and I had to get in there with one of these I had to bend the end on it like that and rot it out and I got it rotted out and the mini bike ran, ran flying after that All right, make sure my pin is down now I can put that screw back in and then I'll go ahead and put a needle and seat in it. New float. We'll put this thing back together. Let's see if we can get it running. One turn. This thing we're gonna have to go through. There's a couple of things you need to know about this. Which I'll go over real quick. I have other videos on these carburetors. Take this apart. I'll put a new O-ring in there because that one's as, as you know, look at that, it's falling apart. It's all no good. Tip of that's nasty. This valve here, this high-speed valve, there should be a little hole around here somewhere. A little hole that's drilled at an angle here it is right there and you would never know it was there until I told you it was and it's plugged so again you would have a you'd have trouble let me see if I can find a smaller smaller one of these wires
Where's them guitar strings at? There's my little wire brush. So all these little things you need to know on these little carburetors. Right there. Right there. There's a little hole and it's plugged. Right at the tip of this tool. So I need to get something small and rod that out. Otherwise this thing isn't gonna run right. I sprayed some carb spray on it and that kind of helped loosen it up as I was drilling it. But it's clear now. But yeah, if you didn't know that hole was there, you'd have never found it unless Terrell told you. Thank you, Terrell. Thank you for telling me about that small, that little small hole on that high-speed needle adjusting screw on that. To come -ish. I'm gonna rod this one out too. I'll clean this up real good. We'll get this thing percolating again. Here's the carp kit. 631021B. And this is just a basic carbitrator kit that comes with a new gasket for the high speed nut, the needle and seat and a bowl gasket. And this is the float bowl, 631867. Now this one's got a, a drain in it. I'll probably clean this up and save this because it's nice to have that. I like to use these on mini bikes. So when I go to store them, I can drain the float bowl. But to save time, I'm just gonna put a new one on it. I can always swap it out later. So I'm gonna blow that seat out of there, the old seat, that rubber seat. And I usually just use compressed air. Be careful, that thing comes shooting out of there, it hurts. We used to shoot them at each other at Feral Shop. Hear it? You get hit with that thing, boy. It stings. But don't mess around, you could hit somebody in the eye. Seriously, hurt them. I'm just gonna get some of this stuff off of here real quick. But the main, the main stuff we needed to address on making this carburetor work, we did. If I use this on a mini bike at a later date, of course I'll soak the carburetor real good. You know, get it ready because I'll probably paint, I would paint that engine. So here's the seat. And the seat has a little ring on one side, and that has to go down. So they make a tool for installing the seat. If you don't have the tool, find a drill bit that fits in here nice and snug. And you use the shank of a drill bit to press it in. And it's always good to put a little lubricant on it. Just to help it get in there. Come on. And there's your dinner. Oh, the float. I forgot the float. I gotta go get the float. Here's the float, 632019A. What's nice about this Tecumish stuff, this older stuff, is all these engines that have this type of float bowl carburetor on it all use the same kit, all use the same float. There are some that use a different bowl. The only difference is it's got a bigger hole in the center. 
but they all use the same stuff. Now in here, they got this little hinge spring and they give you a little love note. Dear Carol, this kit has been created to replace the brass float. The new dampening spring included should be installed only if your carburetor was equipped with one. See illustration on other side for spring installation. Then they show you how it goes on there. That spring is usually on the Tecumish two-stroke engine on a snowblower, those little two-stroke ones will have this spring, this little helper spring. So they're saying, if yours doesn't have it, then you don't use it. Ours didn't have it, so we're not using it. So you put your needle on. Now this needle, you know, this clip, has got this little leg that's sticking out there. That's gotta be facing out like this. You don't want it like this. You want it like this. You want that little, that little leg right there has got to be facing out. If you had a Tecumish service manual, it would tell you that in there. Don't, don't just think I'm making this stuff up. He's making this stuff up as he goes along. And then we want to set our float. So, you either want it level or a little bit below level. Look at ours is perfect. It's just hanging down just a little bit, a little, just ever so slightly. And that's what we want. And we put our bowl gasket on. And then the float bowl, you'll notice, it's got a little, little shelf there. It's a little drop down. You want that to line up with this, just like this. It's got to line up with the float. You don't want it like this, you don't want it like this. It goes across here like this. That's just how it goes. That's how they want it. We'll put our new washer on there. And screw that in. I cleaned up the needle and put a new O-ring on there. I don't have the part number for that O-ring, I just get them at the hardware store. I took a Scotch-Brite pad, cleaned that up with a little carb spray. So we'll tighten this down. And we'll screw this down. So it stops, don't force it. So bottoms out, and then a half, one and a half. So one and a half turns. Now this is ready to go back on. So I'm gonna put it back on. I should have a new gasket up there. I'll go find a new gasket. Give you that part number. We'll put this back on. Run a new fuel line. Fill it up with some dinosaur juice. And as Mr. Heat Gun says, fired up, fired up, fired up. All right, got the carburetor back on, a blower shroud back on. Here's that manifold gasket, part number 27915. They make them aftermarket. I got some rotary branded ones. So here's a little tip. If you're ever replacing this fuel line without taking the cover off. Since I had the cover off, I just ran a piece through there. But if you're ever doing one of these, sometimes it's hard to, to get the fuel line through there. So if you got one of these real long bladed Phillips screwdrivers, you just shove that screwdriver through there, stick the hose on the end of it, and then kind of guide it through. And that makes it simple. So there's a little trick, a little tip trick for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and hook up this end. You know, these 
these hoses fit on there so tight and you've seen what I had to do to get it off. You don't even need them clamps. And then I'll cut it over here. So now we got the new fuel line. Carpetrator's rebuilt, got new fuel line. We got spark. So one other thing I want to do since I got it flipped up and that's take this cover off so I can look at this drive system because it kind of shifts kind of hard so I may have to uh, lubricate some stuff under here so I'm going to go ahead and take this cover off so everything looks good in here it's just a little sticky sliding back and forth so I want to lube you know this is all sticky I could feel it so I'm going to lube that up with some croil and I'm gonna spray some on here. You gotta be careful not to get it on this disc because that disc is what, you know, the wheel rubs against. It's a lot easier now. Spray a little more on there. Do that a few times. get everything to kind of move a little easier. Now I'll go ahead and take some brake cleaner and I'll clean this disc up. Otherwise it's going to slip. So I'll clean that off, get a rag and some brake cleaner. So that way we get some good traction. Well, I got the dinosaur uh, juice in there. And I got the valve open and it's not leaking. So let's put it on choke and put it on fast. And I'm not going to pull on it. I'm going to use that electric start. So let's see if this thing will fire it up, fire it up. Shut up! But the fire it up already.
Well, if I idle it too low, it still won't kick out. That's what I mean about this thing being so dangerous. I'm trying to get it at a low idle so the clutch will not dis, you know, the clutch will disengage so the auger and everything isn't spinning. But I can't get it to idle low enough for that to happen because this thing is a dangerous snowblower. But it does work, it does run. The only problem is we don't have any snow to try it out in. Let me boost up that idle a little bit where I had it. throw that carburetor in the ultrasonic cleaner. Okay, there's that little hole I was telling you about that's got to be clear. That's why we couldn't get this thing to run on low speed. So I ended up putting it in the ultrasonic cleaner and giving it a good cleaning and then I was able to get this wire in there. But that's what you got to do. You got to take one of those tip cleaners bend a little hook on it and then get in there and make sure that hole is rotted out. Now I should be able to get a better idle out of it. And as you can see how clean it came out of the ultrasonic cleaner. So we'll throw it, throw it back together, stick it on there, see how it runs now. Okay, got redid the carburetor again. And I cleared out that little hole, so let's see if it runs and idles a lot better. Because 
Sometimes that's what it takes. You gotta go through these carburetors a couple times. Or I was just rushing it because we're trying to film. This clutch is dragging. So what it's supposed to do is when you idle it down, it, everything's supposed to stop spinning. Well, that's not working. So the, the clutch is, the spring in there is probably a light spring. And even though I tried to idle it as low as I could, it's still engaging. And the spring is in there and it's tight. And I oiled it. But again, bad design. And then one other thing I wanted to bring up that came to me last night after we, we shot some, some of the video. I remember back in the day when I worked at Brother Farrell's, these, these would come in and these plug boots would be real hard. And it would actually keep it from sparking. I don't know why, something in the, in the boot would get hard and you'd have no spark and the ignition system would check out good and you'd still have no spark and then we found out it was these plug boots so if you've got one of these old pieces of equipment that's got this type of plug boot on it you need to replace it with a new one and a new terminal so that's what i got here so I'll cut this off and uh, I'll put a new plug boot on there just to be safe. This one's still soft. That's why we're getting spark. But I can remember back in the day, they would come in and they'd be hard as a carp and we wouldn't be getting spark out of them. And then we found out it was the boot. So I'm gonna replace that too. So what we're gonna do is we'll do a follow-up video with this before I yank the engine off and put it on a mini bike. Uh, when we get some snow. So if we get some snow, we'll take this thing out and test it out and see how, how good it works. I'm sure it'll work fine. It'll probably throw snow 30 feet or more. But it's just dangerous. Some people like danger. Do you like danger? This is the machine for you. Do you like going through life with missing limbs? This is the machine for you. Subscribe to this YouTube channel, Terrell Fixes All. I'm Terrell. Go to our web store, buy some of the stuff we got. Like this beautiful hoodie. This is a beautiful hoodie that I'm wearing. I'm toasty warm right now. Actually, I'm sweating. And the heat's off for today, and it's cold outside. I wish we had some snow. I want to take this thing out and blow some snow with it. But we don't get, we haven't gotten any snow down here. Follow me with your dangerous lawn equipment 
on Facebook and Instagram. Come on. Hey, hey, whoa, whoa, don't run me over with that thing. That thing's dangerous. And as always, there's your dinner. Woo! Dangerous snowblower! Lives again! What a piece of crap. All right, Johnny. I think I got everything ready. What's he saying now? Okay, you have a nice day. I gotta grab this call. It's some bratty kid and his stupid grandpa who tries to fix stuff and can't fix anything. He needs to just throw his tools in the garbage. <laughs> What's that, Terrell? Hello? Uh, hello? Oh, oh, hey, uh, what's the problem, Gary? I got the gas can out. You said to light it on fire? What? Light it on fire? Where'd you get that idea? <laughs> no idea, Terrell. I was just messing with you. What kind of idiot do you think I am? <laughs> what are you gonna do now, Grandpa? We're gonna take it down to Terrell's shop and be done with it, Johnny. Wow. Sounded like he threw his tools in the garbage. That's a good place for him.